AJ Styles versus Six Pack. Mortimer Plumtree <laughs> is now managing AJ as well. Mortimer Plumtree. He is interfering constantly, although he does not interfere for the heat because that might get himself over. So, otherwise, they had a they had a very very good pro wrestling match until. <laughs> But it's it's uh, six pack gets cut off and AJ's working him over and Mortimer's throwing kicks on the outside. You know what's interesting about this match before we get to the finish, before you get to and then. So you know at this period you could watch AJ Styles matches, and with most everybody, low key, you know whoever, it's like they were there for four hours putting this match together, and it's high spots and it's choreography and it's everything like that. You watch this match, and it was like, AJ probably went up to Xbox and goes, I got some ideas for tonight. And Xbox goes, nah, don't worry about it, brother. Just listen, and it's going to be the easiest match of your life. Because they went out there, and I would bet you anything, Xbox called this entire match in the ring. Because it was so simple, but it was great. Like, everything they did was great, but it was the most simple match, little bit of easy wrestling at the beginning, you know, get the heat on X-Pac. The big high spot is AJ just did a big dive. And then later X-Pac went up and he hit a dive. But there was nothing complicated. There was nothing you needed to spend hours working on before the show. But the match was still great. It was a great match. This is exactly what I wanted to bring up. It's like a lot of the X-Division matches is just high spot, high spot, high spot. X-Pac got in there and they actually told the story in between the high spots. And it was really good. So, ref gets bumped, of course. Six pockets, the X Factor. There is no ref. Mortimer Plumtree attacks. And so, Six Pack grabs him, pushes him against the ropes, rears back to throw a punch, and the referee stops him. He puts his hands on Six Pack to stop him from punching a manager who's in the ring where he's not supposed to be. So, Mortimer flees. So, X Pack, Six Pack takes AJ, hits the Bronco Buster. And as he's punching him in the corner, the ref tries to stop him. Six pack throws the referee down, and the referee says, That is against the rules. You, sir. <laughs> you, sir, are a loser. He and you throws are him down, and then he just stands there, mm-hmm. and he keeps looking over the referee like, Dude, <laughs> come just on, make me? the fucking call. And finally, the ref wakes up, <laughs> makes the call. Yeah, this was uh, a shitty finish, but a great match. The Don West hard sell for next week. We have Sonny Siaki versus Jerry Lynn. BG James versus Brian Lawler. Harris and Storm will defend the titles. Plus Jeff Jarrett, Truth, Six Pack, Kurt Hennig, AJ Styles. Doing stuff. Mike Tanay as they sit down with Kurt Hennig. Talks about how great the AWA was here in 2002. All the titles he won there, all the titles he won elsewhere. The people still love me. I have a chance to be NWA champion tonight. Truth is great, but there's no reason I can't have a belt here. This was a good promo. It leads to Kurt Hennig versus Truth. But first, we had a Truth promo. He is burying the board of directors, whoever the hell that is, he notes, because there's 97 authority figures now in DNA. And uh, they accuse him of ducking contenders. Kurt blood is on their hands. Hennig comes to talk about respect, and finally they start fighting. There was one point here very early on, since it's went like six minutes, uh, I think Kurt was shoot choking him out with a guillotine because <laughs> he locks him down on the mat in this face lock and there's lion there and all you hear is truth screaming. <laughs> I I enjoyed the fact that uh, Hennig showed up last week, right? Yes. And it, it was, it goes, I don't know what I'm getting myself into. Yeah. Well, uh, this was exactly like when BG James, uh, he debuts and the first match they had BG James in, it was like a six minute main event because like he couldn't go very long. So this match was also like six minutes, and you could see at the beginning it was like Kurt just laid on the mat for a while, yeah. And and then they did like a couple of spots, and then he was fucking gassed. <laughs> he was so fucking tired, and luckily there were only like a couple of minutes left. But man, this dude is just dying. You could see him when he throws punches; like there's just nothing in these punches, and he was he was so blown up, and it was so short. Yeah. So Truth uses powder in the eyes or something right in front of the ref. Kurt's making his comeback. The ref gets bumped. Mr. Wrestling 3 attacks both of them. And then, I don't know, eight guys ran in. 
I'm, I'm trying to count as he was in there. I see Ron Harris is fighting with BG James for some goddamn reason. We have Bob Armstrong out there and Bill Barron's out there and security out there. Keep in mind, 10 bucks a show. $10 every single week to watch this. Mm-hmm. So the culmination of this interference from a cast of thousands is the ref says, or, or Bullet Bob says, everyone out of the ring, we're still wrestling. <laughs> yeah. The match continues. Yes. Truth is trying to get out of this. Truth beals the referee, not a DQ. He punches out Jeremy Borash. He drops Bullet Bob in the floor. Bob just pops right back, right, pops right back up. No sells the elbow. Says, you defend the title or you get counted out and lose it. So as everyone is focused on the referee counting out Truth, on the other side of the ring, Kurt Hennig is standing alone. Out comes Jeff Jarrett. And uh, Sean, can you uh, show your shirt there one more time, please? <laughs> Punch him in the wiener. Jarrett saw the shirt, ran out there, punched Kurt in the wiener, and uh, Truth pinned him. Yeah. And somehow all of this happened in only nine minutes. You know, this was World Championship Wrestling. Pretty goddamn good show, but a goddamn fucking terrible main event. The show goes off the air and you think, ah, that show sucked. But it didn't. The show was good. But the main event was terrible. There was guys standing around during the melee in between. It looked like an angle that would take place on an indie show. And nobody knows what's going on. I've been in a few of those. It looked so second rate. It looked so bad. Well, well, what they, I mean, what they're doing is they're, they're booking a weekly indie. But unfortunately, it's on pay-per-view for $10 a week. And some like, of these guys get paid, and some of the guys don't get paid, and they have less of a clue than the guys that are getting paid, but not that much less. Well, this main event sucked. And by the way, uh, we didn't even remember this, but... Uh, Dylan notes that last week they billed uh, Styles and Waltman as a ladder match. Mm. And then it just didn't happen. It was just a regular uh, match. Maybe they finally figured out that they were having too many ladder matches. Or, or Six maybe, Box said no. Yeah, Waltman's like, what the <laughs> fuck are we doing a ladder match for? That's stupid. So they did this. And then we have one final video package. Evil yes. knows no bounds. Evil will never rest. I miss mm-hmm. this. Evil returns October 30th, 2002. Mm-hmm. There you Evil go. is coming to TNA? Evil debuting right. in TNA, hopefully not bringing the entire house of torture with them. Jesus, mm-hmm. I didn't know that. Yeah. I Are that. they bringing the killer in? It's, uh, I'm not sure what you mean by that, honestly. Relic? Yeah, Relic. That's, that's years down the line, I think. Okay, I don't But know. It, it was the, uh, what do you call them? Sinister Ministers group. Oh. Oh, the, 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 the Church of... The Disciples of the New Church. Disciples of the New Church. And that's the music that's playing in the background. Yeah. There. So there you go. Oh, speaking of music, I hope you've got your finishes report, Vinny. Ready as ever. Oh, yeah. All righty. Well, let's, uh, let's play this here. That was weird. The finishes on this show were pin after distraction by a woman who was just sitting there, pin after distraction when an innocent woman was pulled in the way but then moved, clean pin... Pin in a tag match, followed by a guy turning on his partner. Clean pin, followed by a post-match attack. DQ due to throwing the ref down. And pin after interference from like a dozen people, and also a wiener punch. I can't believe I said this was a good show after that Hermie Sadler thing. Yeah. It was mostly a good show. Hmm. You that, liked it more than I did. That was very bad. We had some neighbors. They had a little horse. One day the horse disappeared, and we didn't know if they sold it or ate it. <laughs> I think it was aided. I used to go over there and spend the night with the girls. I was quite a bit. Did you ever eat dinner though. there? No. The girls, the twins, they met. They met this father and son. And oh no! One of them married the father, and the other married the son. Can you imagine how different ways they are related? The the I, daughters. I actually can't. That was a weird bunch. The dad was a uh, stepdad to the girls. And they got, got kind of familiar once in a while. <laughs> what? Move on. Go. <laughs> Don't. Just go. He's Was having a cow, too. not inbred? <laughs> anyway, we used to have to churn butter. Are you having fun with me? I don't know. I honestly don't know. <laughs> <laughs> hey, guys, did you love this clip? If so, you should join our channel. Just hit the join button, and you'll have full access to every single show that we do. Wrestling Observer Live, Wrestling Observer Radio, The Brian and Vinny Show. All of them in full HD, full length, plus archives of all of your favorite shows. Click join today and don't miss out.